We are here going to look at a specific circuit that is called a counter. So the counter that we are going to look at is called 74LS162A. So there are different types of counters and this specific counter is a 4-bit counter. So it has a 4-bit state. So in theory it means that it has 16 different states. But this specific counter is a modulo 10 counter. So it only counts from 0 to 9 and then it starts back at 0 again. So it doesn't count 10 to 15. So it's only 10 states are used for this counter, even though there is a possibility to use 16 states. Other counters that are similar to this but has a slightly different name could instead then be 4-bit counters that count to 15 instead and then start over to at 0. So let us look at the inputs and the outputs to and from this counter. So the first input that we will look at is called P. This is a parallel input that consists of four different single inputs called P0, P1, P2 and P3. This parallel input can be used if you want to set the state to a specific value when we get the clock signal. The state is denoted Q here, so we have four bits for the state, Q0 to Q3. And this is also given as four outputs from our counter. So we can see directly here on our outputs what state we are in. And the states can be from zero up to nine. The next input in this table here is the synchronous reset symbol. This symbol is active low, which means that when it is a zero, it is active, and when it is a one, it is inactive. The synchronous reset here will reset our state Q to zero, and synchronous here means that we will reset it when we get a clock signal. An asynchronous reset would instead set the state to zero immediately, regardless of the clock signal. Then we have the signal called parallel en enable, and this will load our input P to our state Q if this is active. And it is active low, which means that if we have a zero on PE, the input that we have on P will be set to the state value Q when we get a clock signal. So this is also a synchronous signal. Then we have two count enable signals. And these two signals must both be one in order for the counter to clock and to count. And counting here means that we go from, for example, state zero to state one or state one to state two and so on. Then we have another output symbol that is called TC, which is short for terminal count. This terminal count is given by this Boolean expression here. So it will be a one if the count enable T here is a one and for Q3 we have a one, for Q2 we have a zero, for Q1 we have a zero and for Q0 we have a one. This means that TC is a one if the CET is a one and we have a nine as the decimal representation of our state. And this signal here will allow us to cascade several counters in order to count to something that is higher than 10, which is supported by only one counter. So we can cascade two counters, for example, in order to have a counter that counts to 100. And then finally, we have the clock signal that determines when we are changing the state in our counter. Here is an example where we make a modulo 100 counter by cascading two modulo 10 counters. And what we're going to use here is our terminal count signal that is one when our state Q is the decimal representation nine and our CET signal, one of our count enable signals is a one. So what we do is that we take our first counter here, which will count our unit numbers. So this will count from zero to nine. So we will, if we want to count, we send in the count here to the CET signal. And since both CET and CEP here needs to be one in order to count, we will hardwire this to a one. We also do not want to load what we have on the P input to the state which means that we set this signal to 1 to disable this parallel load.
and then we also have the synchronous reset signal that we set to 1 because we do not want to reset it because since this is active low we will reset this when we have a 0 so we hardwire this to a 1 and we do the same thing for our second counter we do not want to have a parallel enable so we don't want to load the P to our state Q we want to have uh, this counting and this will count depending on what we will soon see the terminal count from the previous counter and then we do not want to reset this so we hardwire this to a 1 as well and this second counter here will give us our tens so it will say that we are at 10 20 30 40 and so on and then we have the clock signal that we just feed in the same clock signal to both our two counters and the reason this works is that we have our terminal count signal in our first counter so remember that this will only be a 1 if our CET signal is a 1 here and our state Q is equal to 9 in decimal. So this means that when we have the state 9 in our first counter and we want to count, it means that the first counter will go to 0 because it is a modulo 10 counter, but we will also send a count signal here into the second counter. So only when we want to go from 9 to 10, that is 0 in our first counter, but 10 in our counting, then we will send an input to the CET signal here that is a 1. So we will count this counter, or we will increment the state of this counter. So what will happen is that we here will count from 0 up to 9, and then when we have 9 and we want to clock again, here this one will go back to 0, but this one will clock to 1 here. And then again we will count up to 9, and then when we go back to 0, this one will go to 2, and so on. And finally, when this second counter reaches 9, and we also have 9 in our first counter, the first counter will go to 0, and the second counter will also go back to 0, because it is also a modulo 10 counter. So what we have done now is that we have used two modulo 10 counters in order to implement a modulo 100 counter. We can also, if you want, use this modulo 10 counter to implement a modulo 6 counter. And what we use here is that when Q equals 5, and when CET equals 1, that is when we have the state 5 and we want to count again, then we want to go back to 0 because that will give us a modulo 6 counter. So we want to set this signal here to 0 when Q equals 5 and CET equals 1. So what we do is that we construct our own TC value here. So instead of using the TC value that we have here for our counter, we will make our own. So we make it in the same way, but instead of having Q3 prime, Q2, Q1, and Q0 prime that we have for our TC counter in the counter, we instead have the value 5 here. So when Q3 is a 0, Q2 is a 1, Q1 is a 0, and Q0 is a 1, it means that what we have here is the decimal notation of 5 then we want to send this TC signal. And this signal will similarly let us cascade several modulo 6 counters if we want, but we will also use this signal in order to feed it back here to our reset signal. So when we have a 1 here, it means that when we invert this, we have a 0, and since we have this active low, this synchronous reset, it means that we go to the state 0 when we have the state 5 here on the output's Q, and we also have the clock signal, and we want to count. So what will happen here is that we count from 0 to 1, to 2, to 3, to 4, to 5, and when we have 5, we will have a 0 input on the reset signal, and when we have a new count here, it means that we will go back to the state 0, because we are now resetting the circuit. And now we just continue to count upwards 
and we will not reset the circuit again until we reach the state 5 the next time. And then again we will reset the circuit. So we have a modulo 6 counter counting from 0 up to 5 and then starting over at 0. Here is another implementation of a modulo 6 counter. And in order for this implementation to work, we're just going to assume that we do not really care about the value of the counter, but what we care about is that we will want to have this value here, our TC output, that should be 1 every 6 clocking. So in some sense, this is also a modulo 6 counter because we get the value here 1 every time we reach the value 5 in this case in our counter, but that will not correspond to the value 5 in our state Q here. We are going to implement this by using our regular terminal count, and we know that this is 1 when our state is 9 and we have our count enabled T here equals 1. So what we do is that for our input P, we're going to send in 0, 1, 0, 0, and this equals 4 in decimal. So we have 0 here, 1 here, 0 here, and 0 here, which is actually equal to 4 in decimal form. What we do now is that we know that when TC here equals 9, it means that we have a 1 here on the output, so we'll have a 1 here, which means that we have a 0 on our parallel enable. And parallel enable means that when we have a clock signal, our p value, which is 4, is now transferred to our state q. So 4 is here moved to q. So this means that we're going to count 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 9. And when we reach 9, we know that our terminal count is a 1, so we will again go back to 4. So here we have TC equals 1. And as you can see, this is actually a modulo 6 counter, but we are counting the states 4 up to 9, and then we start over at 4 again. So this is just another way of implementing our modulo 6 counter if we are not dependent on the fact that our Q values actually represent our values 0 up to 5, because in this case they instead represent 4 up to 9. But on the output that we have here on the terminal count, we will have a 1 every 6th count. And this is exactly when our counter reaches the value 9 here.